Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, how are things going? I just uh, came back from a flight, and um, on the plane, uh, first of all, flight was delayed, so everybody's all pissed off. And then, you know, people are all re really agitated. And then, like, we're getting ready to go, and uh, the some guy, like, starts yelling out, why are you staring at me? Why are you staring at me, Mr. KKK? And he's like, is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm black you're staring at me? And starts to like really get really loud and obnoxious. And the plane gets all quiet, um, mainly because everybody on that plane's like, ah, shit, we're not, we're not taking off. <laughs> it's exactly like nobody really cared about the drama. Um, the guy who was being yelled at was, you know, ah, I couldn't tell, but about 10 rows up. Um, because I, you know, and, and, you know, the guy basically does, does a pretty, I think, the, the, the right thing who is like immediately kind of just gets up and then doesn't talk to the person who's yelling and getting really angry. And is like, I will happily sit anywhere else. And then the flight attendant is like, okay, come on back here and put the guy in a seat. And then the flight attendant goes and said, and then, then they're having this whole conversation. Like, do we need to open up the plane and kick this person off or not? And then it becomes clear that the person is um, mentally challenged, who's screaming and yelling. And so the, you know, the flight attendant's like, I'm just going to work to calm this guy down. And, and we're just going to, you know, take off and get going. And then, uh, like, the other flight attendant comes over and is like, yeah, but we think we need to move this guy because he is sitting in an exit row, and I don't think uh, that's just, let's not have him here. So anyway, they had created this whole, but, and, like, the entire plane, I don't know if you ever had a situation, like, the entire plane is holding its breath. Basically, of like, are, is this plane going to go off? And you could see the flight attendant's like, should we, should we, should we stop? Should we turn around? And, and it was a whole, like, it was, it was funny, in a sense. <laughs> Funny in a ha ah, ha ha. We're all fucked to cut away. So that was um, that was my evening. But anyway, came back. Um, definitely while I was on the trip, you know, read a bunch of comics. Uh, that was fun. They got uh, got a couple things to to read there, and uh, also read some of your mails, recorded some videos while I was away. All that kind of good stuff. Um, and I got to this one. This is Dear Perch. I have recently read the May solicitations for Marvel and DC, and to say the least, I am underwhelmed. Marvel's output is a chaotic mess with no real rhyme or reason to it. Uh, events upon events happening across titles uh, with no reason to care about the results. DC's is a little better with the dot of DC titles at least promising an organized launch line, but with the Lazarus Planet spinoffs such as Spirit World, The Vigil, and City Boy look generic as hell. City Boy as a character sounds like the only one who could end up not being forgotten. I don't know about that. Anyway, the fact that they are mini series make them like feel like disposable content on a streaming service that only serves as forgettable padding among titles. At least they had fixed that Justice Society is not a twelve issue maxi series, but an ongoing until it ends up being in the ending at twelve issues. I could go on, but the truth is clear. Apathy is ruling you right now at the big two. I believe a comic about you perch perchington shopping shopping but the best flavor of edible lingerie to give your wife, <laughs> I'm never going to live that down, would be a more interesting comic than the X-Book line. I don't know, that that beast has gone bad and is uh, going to be a villain and uh, screwing things up again. Has the potential to be a good story. Unfortunately, I have my doubts are going to go where they need to go with that story. And, you know, I mean, one of the things the X-Men has done through this Kokoa era is basically eliminate the villains, eliminate a lot of the threatening, really dangerous villains. The Beast uh, could be one. They could go all in on having the Beast be evil. We've seen other incarnations of him as also. You know, you could go there. It would be, it'll be interesting. Um, I, I get the feeling they're not going to. They'll, they'll do so. I mean, hell, they could just, re like, let's, uh, you know, reset him. You know, kill him off, reset him, but we'll not give him the memories of the, Last five years, and basically, it'll clean slate him. Uh, feels like that's where they're they're going to go. So, like, well, let's just erase all the badness. I don't know, um, but yeah, I, I think. Look, I, I read over the solicitations, and I have a similar feeling. It feels, and I've said this for a little bit of time. It feels like a lot of the titles are treading water. Not all of them, you know. There's stuff to there is there are titles to be excited about. There's there's some here or there, but it feels like a very small amount in what feels like a very large, you know, volume of titles. And, you know, you, you look at all this stuff and it does make you want, it's, it's the, uh, you know, quantity over quality. 
is what they have going on, and it is producing apathy. Um, the events comment that you made, events on top of events with no nothing that really matters from the event, um, is yeah, it's a big problem. And I, it was it reminds me of all things of a South Park episode. And uh, you, you probably I don't know watch South Park. Um, Rick and Morty has done something similar, but the, basically the plot is when you get such a barrage of uh, you know of hype and and like this is the biggest thing ever. Now you're gonna love this, and now you're gonna love that, and you're gonna we could just dispose of it and just start again. And when you when you do that so much, you get you know you you burn out. In the South Park episode, the uh, what the voice stand just started. Everything sounded like shit. Every I just he he became just numb and apathetic to everything. Just all you know, it wasn't good. But I didn't even feel that mad about it. This was like, eh, I've seen it all before, a lot before. And it's it's in effect, it's it's burnout. Rick and Morty has done it as I said a few times, where usually Morty is really excited about something, and then it it goes too far, and then he he it just burns him out. And he just becomes kind of a numb to the whole thing. That's kind of the meta lesson of uh, Rick and Morty too. Like we got all this continuity and all these people. Look, isn't this? You know, they're 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 doing their own thing with it. Um, will Rick and Morty be the same now that Justin Rowland is uh, apparently out? Anyway, crazy. Um, I mean, hell, you, you got James Gunn over there doing these. And anyway, I won't go down. I won't go down that uh, that that cycle. But look, I I think that the big two have a big, you know, as I mentioned, a big problem with apathy. So the question is, you know, how did we get here and how can we pull it back? And how did we get here is what we've been talking about on this channel for a long time. Too many events, big promises events that, that don't matter, or get erased or, you know, only serve to set up the next event. And, you know, you, you there, there is a, uh, there is a point where you, you just, you know, it, it's like this thing will, it, things will never be the same after this. It's, it's when Marvel solicitations start making fun of their own solicitations. Where Marvel starts going, we know we always say things will never be the same after this, but, uh, you know, you're, you're right. It probably will be the same. But that's okay. Buy this comic anyway. I forget which Marvel comic did that, but legitimately, one of them did that. They kind of did that for AXE. And, you know, we can excuse it. People do all the time. They'll say things like, you know, well, you know, the writers don't write that stuff, and you know, hey, you know, Kieran Gillen, he wanted to tell AXE just in the Eternals, you know, and, and just do the story there. But they made him make an event. So it's not his fault that the whole thing kind of sucked. It, it, it was, you know, Marvel's fault for pushing it as a event. I mean, there, there's lots of excuses, sure. And you do kind of start to feel like people like with Colin Kelly and Lansing, the, the guys who are doing the Captain America uh, Cold War event. We're like, do, do you think the writers meant for there to be an alpha and omega kind of event and, and hype it up? Or do you think they were just trying to do a, you know, a storyline in the comics? My suspicion, having talked to, you know, tons of writers over the years is they just really wanted to do a, you know, a comic. They, they didn't, they didn't intend or want to do all this other shit. They just, they just wanted to do a, you know, a comic storyline and the, the publisher's like, no, 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 we'll squeeze an extra 10% out of this if we do an event, throw a number one issue in there, a couple of tie-ins and all the rest. I mean, this isn't a new story. We've been talking about this for years and years. Peter David complained about this way back in the late 80s, early 90s. This kind of stuff. So, again, this is nothing new. So why now? Why has it? Why is it tipped? Well, one reason is, I think, the volume. We used to complain about you know, cause something like this. When I remember, I remember just bagging on fear itself, the Matt Fraction event, just just bagging on it, and it just wasn't a very good event, and it it killed off a couple of characters, but of course they were going to come back, and you know, it's it's like, it just you you had that feeling of like it doesn't really matter, and you know, sure enough, um, I long for those days because there was at least nearly a year not eight months, between the conclusion of, you know, Fear Itself and the next event. It actually did take a little bit of time to get to the next one. Today, it's it's monthly. I mean, it, it literally, there is an event going on every month. And that is not an exaggeration. And so it, it, it's, you know, it's if, if you could kill, you know, there's a ton of cliches. Killing the Golden Goose, you know, whatever. There's lots 
of different examples of where it goes south. So how do we correct it? How do you turn this thing around? Well, first you got to admit you have a problem, but, but then here's the, the toughest pill of all to swallow. And it's a, it's where the funny thing is, I think the publishers could do it. I don't think they're, uh, you know, the, uh, certainly the Disney and Warner media won't mind if they do this, but it would be a bitter pill to swallow. And definitely it's, it's like somebody has to make the sacrifice. And that sacrifice is you're going to have to have lower sales for a while and lower sales for a while because you're going to have to knock off the events, do one a year. It's crazy to me. Like, just do one event a year. Once upon a time, that, that would have sounded absurd, but just get back to one event, just one a year. And you're going to have to have some comics where, you know, you're, you're just going to tell a story for a while and you're not going to worry about a big status quo change every four issues. You're not going to worry about a big gotcha, you won't believe what will happen moment. You're just going to have to tell solid adventure stories in your solid superhero books. You know, you're, ju you're just going to need to have Spider-Man having some adventures without teasing that Mephesto is going to undo the marriage or what's going on with Mary Jane or who's like, just, you know, give us, you're going to have to give like a couple years of just solid comics for a while. Things where you're telling a story, not try to break the world. And the reason you're going to need to do that is because you've got to remind readers that, Hey, there's a comic that will give you a story with these characters you like, and it, it'll just give you a story. And some of the stories may be better than others, but, one thing we're not going to do is we're not going to overhype it. We're not going to bang you over the head with this, this, you know, this is the thing that will never be like the other things ever again. We're just going to, you know, give you a solid tale. And that's, that's going to be weird for some people, but that's, that's what we're going to do. But it, and the result is you're going to have lower sales for a bit of time because you're going to have to let go of the gimmicks of, Varying covers and shock uh, events that are going to try to drive speculator. You're just going to have to let that alone. And if you do that, you start to get people who are who are not jaded to the bullshit that you've been doing for so long. You're, you're going to be able to turn the tide a little bit with customers. Some customers may not come back. I'm sure many of you in the comments will say, "I'll never come back." That's fine. But you gotta you you gotta at least say, "Look, we're going to just lay down our arms for a minute." And we're going to just try and tell you some stories for a while and you're not going to love all of them, but we're just going to, we're not going to try and make tomorrow the biggest thing in the history of all the things. There's a lot of people doing that. The news does that. Social media does that. Every week is a week like none other. The earth is dying. The president is dumber than ever. My dick is bigger than anyone else's. Well, I mean, that one's true, but, but in general, everything has been, it's been hyped to death. And you gotta, you gotta go away from that. That means that for a while, people are gonna be like, well, I guess there's no events. There's nothing really to go on here. But you'll remind people that there is something worth reading. Something is, is worth, you know, coming to. And it's just the reason you bought comics in the first place, a story. Again, the, the funny part is you'll make less money. Disney's not going to give a shit, really. They don't care. It's marketing. Just put out some comics. Don't worry about popping things up. There is not a world. And in some ways, you wish there kind of was, but there's not a world where, you know, Zaslav and, and Iger are like walking down the halls like, I want to see the financial awards for Marvel Comics this month. They're not asking. It is a rounding error to them right now. So take advantage of that. Get back to telling stories. Let go of the crack. Stop trying to do something that's never... Stop trying to outthink it. Of, the customers will never, ever believe this is happening. Just, just go for some solid comics. You know, I'll throw it out there to uh, to Scott Snyder. Okay, once upon a time, Scott Snyder, New Fifty Two, did Batman, Ray Capullo. Art was great. Uh, stories were great. Stories were great. It was, it, you know, it was a good it was a good comic, but it wasn't. Uh, it it didn't feel like the end of the universe with every arc. That was not what they were doing. Sure, they had uh, you know death in the family, and they kind of hyped up within the comic, but it was nothing like what you see here today. Not not at all. They just told stories. Well-drawn stories. You know, the art was a, a hook and a draw of itself, but it was that was the deal. They had a long run. It worked. Even Tom King, who, you know, we did definitely committed the grave sin of, of hyping a wedding that didn't happen. It was, and, but even that one, 
not a bad, not a bad example. He came in, did a comic, and many, many, many arcs there. Some of which he liked, some of which he didn't like. But here's the thing: the sales were stronger. The you know people who didn't like it legitimately didn't like it. You know until they did the shenanigans around the wedding and everything. The one thing that series didn't have was really apathy. They had people who didn't like it, but didn't have apathy. And apathy is worse. Always. Anyway, thank you very much for the mail. We'll, we'll get there. Or maybe we won't. I don't know. Glass half empty, glass half full. Pick your poison. As long as that glass has some whiskey in it, I'm good. Thanks for listening.